They're in competition with us. They want to be number one. They want to replace us. And so we have to see every dependency upon China, whether it be for medications or for steel or anything else, as a potential weakness that the Chinese Communist Party will exploit to their advantage when they decide to do so. We need a hard decoupling of the U.S. economy from the Chinese economy. Apparently, the president is working on an executive order on this, and that is great news. It should include a formal policy of industrial repatriation, announce a list of key strategic production that must be located in America, including essential pharmaceuticals, and announce a formal decoupling from China. Economically, we see factories in China shutting down, workers not being able to go back to work, and that will only... Um, lead to further decoupling, you know, on um, mm. following the trade war. China has been ripping this country off for 25 years, for longer than that. And it's about time, whether it's good for our country or bad for our country, short term, long term, it's imperative that somebody does this because our country cannot continue to pay China $500 billion a year because stupid people are running it. So I don't mind this question. Whether it's good or bad, short term is irrelevant. We have to solve the problem with China because they're taking out $500 billion a year plus, And that doesn't include intellectual property theft and other things. The foreign ministry had uh, made a, a rare statement um, at its press briefing uh, saying that any decoupling of China and the U.S. would harm both sides and cause instability in global markets. If you look ahead at phase one and done, if this doesn't stick for some reason, uh, then we move from really from, from trade war to perhaps in a second Trump term, uh, decoupling and all that that brings. And of course, we're also in this world now where deglobalization seems to be the larger trend, and this will take years to unfold. They do have significant uh, portions of the American pharmaceutical supply chain, and I suspect that this is also an implicit threat against the United States to say, look, um, if, if you tick us off enough, we have the ability to turn off things like ibuprofen and precursor chemicals for penicillin. This morning, Ambassador Wei Tian Kai refused to answer questions from us as he left State Department headquarters. Officials here say they objected to what they say is China's blatant global disinformation campaign on the coronavirus. American officials have pointed to this tweet from a spokesman for China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs saying, quote, it might be U.S. Army who brought the epidemic to Wuhan. Be transparent. Make public your data. USO us an explanation.